everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today, we're reviewing the 123 Lego Ideas Sesame Street set. There are six mini figures included. It will sell for $120. We got this set early from Lego to do this review, so thanks a lot, guys. It will be uh, on sale to the public November 1st, 2020. And uh, yeah, 1,368 parts. And uh, it's looking very, very colorful. You could probably guess how we're going to start this review off, and that is with the minifigs. Characters include Elmo, Big Bird, Cookie Monster, Bert and Ernie, and the Grouch. Very, very, very colorful guys. First up is Elmo. They did do no printing for Elmo on the body, which is really interesting. He just has the exclusively molded headpiece. It's a pretty good looking piece, uh, no complaints here. And I suppose it kind of makes sense. Uh, the only printing they could have really added for him is maybe like little bits of fur detailing, but do you really need it? I don't know. Um, I don't really think you do. Let's move on to Big Bird. Big Bird's probably the most involved figure, I would say, from any of these characters. The molded torso piece is obviously exclusive just to him, if you can take it off. So there he is. Uh, these chicken arms were actually found in, I think, that little springtime set, little chicken minifigure. Uh, the prints for his legs are exclusive to his body as well. Really nice mold, though. Um, I like that they managed to find a reuse for that particular chicken arm piece. Uh, looks pretty darn good. And then uh, looks like Cookie Monster has his back turned to us. If I can push that in a little bit better. There he is. Once again, no printing for the Cookie Monster. Did I push that down all the way? You can also see that they have the shorter legs. Elmo has the shorter legs. Cookie Monster has the shorter legs. They all do, in fact, except for Big Bird. And uh, yeah, of course, he comes with some cookies. Why do these guys all have their backs turn to me. Let's look at Bert and Ernie together. I feel like that kind of makes the most sense. They have the best printing by far. No doubts about it. Printing in the front and back for his shirt. It's nothing too involved, I would say, for either of them, but there is at least a certain level of detail and intricacy to their little patterns that they stayed true to. Once again, molds are great all around. You cannot complain about the accuracy and just the good looking nature of the way these characters' heads were molded. Interesting here though, moving on to the Grouch. He doesn't have any unique pieces made for him. He's the only one that doesn't. What they did for his face is pretty clever. It's actually BB-8's head. It's BB-8's body, sorry. It's BB-8's body, and they, they added a head to the bottom that kind of anchors him in there. He rests loosely, but that is BB-8's body, uh, and they just printed uh, his head onto that. So that's, that's very clever. It makes it so the trash can lid actually stays on his head when he, when he looks around. Really, really clever. Nice looking fig. And you know what? Six exclusive figures in a $120 set is not bad, but I know you guys are going to say it in the comments, so I might as well mention it now. Yeah, they could have had more figures, more uh, characters. I think they made a calculated decision and they chose their six maybe most favorite or most popular ones. Yes, they could have included other ones, but um, this is actually kind of a lot of figures for this type of set. And who knows, maybe at some point they'll make an addition or something. I, I, I kind of doubt it, but yeah, these are the six that you get. Let me know in the comments which ones you thought they should have had, because I know, you, I know I'm gonna see them. All right, so initial set review impressions before I jump closer into the build details. Uh, this set is probably one of the single most successful ones when it comes to making references and Easter eggs. There are so many specific references to either uh, exact places in characters' rooms or specific episodes or just character traits that uh, certain people are kind of known for in the show. It's pretty much all here or it's as jam-packed as you could possibly get for this set. I almost feel a little bit out of my element because I haven't actually watched Sesame Street in a long time. I'm just uh, decently familiar with the main characters. Starting off with the brown stones in the front, uh, the main front stoop of, actually, wait a second, I feel like the Grouch uh, should be there. He's both a minifigure and a 
fixture, I should say. He just sort of fits loosely in there, if I can actually get him to stand upright. There we go. Um, yeah, so we've got tan and nougat. I really like the fact that we have some of these larger uh, one by three jumper pieces in nougat. You also get these nice brackets in nougat in general. Uh, simple build style that makes up the external detailing, but it looks really good. So it's easy to put together and also looks pretty darn good. You can say the same for the next exterior over here. You got a Hooper's sign, tons of sticker detailing, by the way. I mean, I can't possibly get into all of the details, but I will point out when you do have prints. So you do have a print here for this heart character. Sorry, I, I'm unfamiliar. There's also a pizza, pizza print in the, uh, in the trash next to the Grouch. This is a sticker. The there we go, managed to focus for you. You can see cooking with oatmeal, and that is a sticker. And then on the inside, this is also a sticker, a recipe for oatmeal, mango, and buttermilk. One, two, three, Sesame Street, those are stickers. Here is Big Bird's area in the corner. You have a sticker there for a character. This is Snuffy also, and uh, his bath actually studs in here. There's a little bit of posability. The tree can uh, kind of turn around. You can pose it in slightly different ways. You can move things around. This is, I think, supposed to stay there. And uh, altogether, it's a nice little area on the outside for Big Bird. I really like this fire hydrant uh, build. It's uh, probably one of the best looking ones. It would be awesome to get some of these pieces in red for sort of a classic looking fire hydrant. They made, ooh, sorry, I'm going fast. Here we go. Check this out. It's uh, syringe pieces. It looks cool, but uh, I kind of prefer stuff being able to stud in and stick into place. It would have been awesome if there was a way to have the mailbox stay there. The okay. Sesame Street lamp post can be easily removed from the corner if you want. This is kind of, ooh, there we go. This is kind of a pearl piece. It's got a little bit of color warble in there. And let's see if I can attach that correctly again. It's a really nice looking piece though. Uh, and just moving around to the outside, I just like uh, a lot of the snotting detail. It is really simple to put all of this stuff together, which I which I like a lot. My brother was the one that actually built a lot of this, and he built it with his son, who's very, very young, who, uh, who actually was able to help put together some of these details, even though it looks very, very nice. It's pretty darn quick and easy to, uh, to actually keep it all together and put it together. This is a sticker detailing. It's a nice little, you know, classic pizza, pizza tabletop covering. If I can get my hand back in there, it's a little bit, little bit narrow. May not have been put back in the exact position, but that's always the way those things go. And now that we're doing this, we might as well get into some of the details. Let's start off with Bert and Ernie's room. Starting off in the corner here, this is most likely Bert's bed because we've got a box of, if I can pull this piece out, we've got a box of paper clips. Once again, uh, I think everything in this room is all sticker detailing. I think these are uh, bottle caps, bottle cap collection. You've got a picture of Bert and Ernie. Uh, I think this is the first time we get this little dinosaur without a print there. It's just like a dinosaur model, the little raptor body. This is a love seat here, and uh, it kind of comes off, or it comes off somewhat easily. Behind are some books. This is, uh, what is that, a clock? It looks sort of like a clock, maybe a learn how to count clock or something. And of course you've got the rubber ducky. Little bit of, oh, little bit of water detailing on the inside, and this is a kind of sparkly, trans blue piece, which is a little bit odd. It's not something I'm normally used to seeing. It's probably come out in other sets though. Let's see if I can get this detail from just tilting the camera. We've got Elmo's room. Nah, it looks better from down below. I changed the camera angle. Uh, we've got some sticker detailing, uh, some aliens on there. He's got a telephone. There are just so many details as I move this around. You can see a rocket ship. This is a print for the little fish there. Not sure if that's an exclusive print, Bunny Rabbit, Elmo also has a train that is at the foot of his bed and that somehow possibly could go underneath his bed, even though it's absolutely massive. We've got some more sticker detailing. I think that's his dad up there with the, uh, the soul patch, which is pretty funny, and just nice details all around. There is also one more 
footprint right up there. I think that's the golden gate in the corner. We already checked that out. Also the back of Big Bird's thing can open up uh, out here. I didn't, I didn't show that off earlier. Another thing I didn't show off, let me remove uh, this. This is made of those candle pieces, by the way, excellent construction. There's also a sticker checkerboard yellow and black right at the base of that counter, which is, it looks nice and accurate. Really hard to see though. Sticker detailing up here for Hoopers. There's a lot of pretty amazing interior and sticker detailing. I like the builds for the chairs and the TV looks nice. You've got some VHS cassette tapes, which is absolutely awesome. These are prints and they're VHS sort of blank tapes, but that is definitely uh, a welcomed throwback. It's uh, one it looks to be uh, sticking out of the VCR player, in fact. And here we are looking at the interior of Hoopers. We've got some uh, fun little snacks and uh, other just items, colorful prints. I think everything we're actually looking at right here is a print detail, though a lot of it is not necessarily exclusive to just this set. It's hard to kind of keep track of all that stuff, and I actually want to push this back. We do have these two open Technic pinholes, which uh, once again could indicate that something could attach to this set at some point, or it could be nothing at all. But we do have these open Technic pinholes, which is kind of interesting. Here's a quick look at the top of the roof above Bert and Ernie's room. We've got some uh, chimneys or steam stacks here. This is a little TV antenna for cable from back in the day and a loosely fitting UFO, which I'm gonna be perfectly honest, I, I don't remember that episode or exactly what the UFO is for, but it just kind of rests there loosely. You get two dove pieces, which is nice. I actually really like these little dovey birds, so it's cool that you get a couple of them sticking back here. And now let me set this up for a final shot very quickly before final thoughts. This is the manual. There are some nice images and shots about Sesame Street and the designers. I just thought I'd show it. It's only like four or five pages. Then it gets straight into the steps. Simple black. I mean, I feel like it could be a little bit more comfortable because, or sorry, more colorful because uh, it is Sesame Street after all. And then this is the box. Also a pretty dark box, but I think they're trying to keep everything uh, somewhat consistent stylistically between the ideas sets themselves. So anyways, there's the front and back of the box, sort of. You get at least a, a kind of image. And now into the final thoughts of the set. The designers here really, really, really cared about putting as many familiar details into this model as possible. I mean, I've seen Easter eggs before. I've seen special little nods here and there from sets in the past, but this is probably one of the most singularly complete ones. So many specific sticker details that reach out to uh, tiny little areas and points in time within the Sesame Street line. Um, I know people are gonna say in terms of criticisms, Ah, I didn't get the character I wanted or they could have made more characters. I think logistically six unique figs for this is is not a bad number and I think they also made a pretty good choice in characters as well, at least in terms of classic peep, cl classic Sesame Street characters that have been around forever. I think all these guys have been uh, some of the originals from the very, very beginning. Um, not a fan of the loose stuff, the UFO. It would be very easy for it to stick in there so it wouldn't be resting loose around. I've dropped these, these extra loose pieces off a couple of times just moving it around and I probably will keep doing it when we keep moving the set around. But it's awesome because uh, it's simple enough where younger builders that actually are enjoying Sesame Street right now as a target audience with some adult supervision could help in certain areas for this set. There's a lot of relatively simple brick stacking techniques that make up uh, a good chunk of this model. So um, yeah, younger kids with supervision, this is rated for 18 and up, I think, but uh, yeah, the, the techniques are simple enough to the point where uh, kids that really like Sesame Street with a parent could actually participate somewhat in the build process. So anyways, uh, yeah, I think it's a great model. Uh, I really appreciate LEGO sending this set over to us to do a review. And uh, if you enjoy our content, remember you can always like, subscribe, comment, do whatever you want to do. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Yeah.